Hey, I'm your host, Wes. And I'm your host, Scott. Come on in and grab a seat. Because you're hanging with us at the barbershop. Oh, that's good. I was thinking about that earlier today because of talking about Axe League. I know there's the two leagues. I figured I should probably know the difference between the two. The two leagues of what? The two federations, I should say. Oh, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Yeah, but if we're going to talk about Axe, we want to make sure we're, we're yeah. pimping the one that we belong to. Yes, yes, which is IATF. IATF. And the other is Battle, B-A-T-L-Y? So without looking at your, your iPad, tell me what IATF stands for. International Axe. You bastard, you just yeah. cheated. <laughs> I, I got to literally look at the letters to be able yeah. to tell you. International Axe Throwing Federation. Oh, fair enough. Okay. And don't ask me what battle is because it doesn't matter. Yeah, we don't play with them. No. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think? Hey, well, it's Wes. been uh, it's been a few days. We've had some time to uh, digest everything and uh, get some boots on the ground, shake some hands, metaphorically speaking, in light of COVID. Yes. But we've made some relationships, and uh, hey, we got some stuff to talk about. So exactly, uh, exciting week. Uh, we all got out uh, one day and. Uh, did a little bit of a, a promo shoot to add to our teasers, to our social media, which was a good day out. Went into Peterborough and stopped at Henry's Barbershop on Hunter. Yeah, I mean, it was a, uh, what a great trip too, because I mean, when you had pitched the idea about going over there, I wasn't really sure how this was going to work. And, you know, you taking the lead on it, all I got was this, I had a phone call. And then, uh, you know, you get that face-to-face meeting and you'd said to me, well, that went a lot better than the phone call. <laughs> exactly, right? And it, I mean, right, it's always that call and it's a little bit impersonal and you're trying to kind of read the person over the phone yeah. and some people have great phone voices so, and others, uh, you're like, you kind of read them as as neutral, right? Yeah. And be like, you know what, we'd be happy to have you here and I'm trying to kind of inject myself and not, you know, take up too much of his time on the day I called and I don't want to take too much time up from his business and right, definitely that there's COVID protocols. and right? Yeah, of course. Three guys coming in to your shop. Yeah, in the midst of a working, you know, it's a regular work day and here we are, you know, three, you know, ostensibly three clowns that nobody knows and, you know, there's clients like, what are these guys doing, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Ideally, we got there. That's why you probably told us in between those times. uh, Wasn't super busy at their shop. No, no. But uh, from what he was saying, now with COVID, walk-ins are really a thing of the past and they're doing a lot of uh, online bookings or phone-ins. Yeah, and I really got the impression from Mike and Jay that that was working for them, that they were really dialed in with how that was working, and, and it seemed to be a good fit in light of, you Restrictions. Know. Yeah. Yeah, business yeah, yeah. is good, and he said, you know, the barbers, for the way it is, sounded like they had a morning shift and an afternoon shift, and the guys were actually pretty happy that, yeah, you know yeah. what, they knew what they had, they knew well ahead of the day if the day was booked full or yeah. if it had spaces. Um, so, which is right as anyone that works on a chair basis, I'm sure they're pretty happy when they know their day is full. Oh, absolutely. And you're, you're making money when you yeah, go to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no, none of that waiting around, you know, who gets the next one. But uh, it was cool. Cause going into it, like an old school barber and you kind of look at the, like the church pew benches yeah, there. like what an experience walking into that building, not knowing. History. Yeah, not knowing what you're walking into. And then you open the door and you step into this, you know, I mean, it's long. It's a long, narrow building. So, I mean, it's very indicative of the downtown of Peterborough. Correct. It's not overly wide, but yet it's wide enough that, you know, people aren't tripping over each other. And you just see this sea of vintage barber chairs. And it just brings back that boyhood memory of going to the barber right hopping up into the chair we didn't have to use a booster this time no no (laughs) Uh, i thought of that uh, because i we were talking last episode about uh haircuts and stuff and we uh murray bulmer murray bulmer yeah and that big old booster that he had yeah for when you were little right and it went across the arms or the plank (laughs) yeah and went across the arms and pushed you up they probably had one there we just oh i'm sure we didn't ask to see it i'm sure but yeah, talk about this like really cool experience walking in and just seeing the history on the walls, you know, the photographs and the certificates from the various organizations that they've supported over the years. And, you know, to meet two young guys like Mike and Jay who are, are coming into the business, having done other things in life that are now going down into this as a new business venture and seeing what they brought in. For sure. Like I really, really love, as soon as Mike said that, you know, he was the M from M and J's skate park back in the day. And 
immediately my eye is drawn to all of the skateboard paraphernalia across the shop. Makes so much more sense, right? Yeah. That it's his thing. But what a cool fit, though. And, right, kind of a a connection to us, because then you get a smile on your face and like, hey, do you remember uh, Tom? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's like, oh, for sure. And he's like, oh, we're friends with him. And he's like, right, he's like, oh, that's so cool. And, right, kind of let him a little update on what Tom's doing. And, you know, it's another connection, right, that, you know, we hang out with cool skater guys too. Yeah. <laughs> I just felt it was a, this really great experience. Like as far as first meetings go, like you really couldn't ask for a better experience, to, you know, to walk in and meet two guys who don't know who's coming through the door, but are like, you know, they hear our pitch, which really, let's be real. wasn't really a pitch. It was a, we don't really know what we're doing, but we're going to talk like we kind of do. And we hope that you get what we're saying. And they're like, oh yeah. And I think that's it, right? Guys want to do or want to listen or want to be a part of something. And I mean, I think that thought process through the the everything and, you know, we've put some teasers up. We put a picture of you and me chatting, um, updated the logo a couple of times, moved some stuff around and the overwhelming support and questions and when are you posting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're at a whopping 165 likes on Facebook. You know, to have that traction like we did in, what, 24 hours, we went from, what, five, and let's be real, those were, like, just our family. Right. But, like, overnight, it's like, hey, we're at 60, and then by the time we left after the first recording session, it had bumped over 70, so. Right, and big shout out to everybody that's yeah. shared the post. Huge thank talked you. Talked about the post, uh, is excited about the post, has ideas for the podcast already. Yeah. Makes me feel so good. Makes me excited. And then sharing stuff with, you know, some of the people that at work that are excited. And I played a clip for them today and they can see my excitement by it and they're getting excited. So it's it's, it's neat, right? And they're like, you might be like famous one day. And I'm like, well, let's not go. uh." (laughs) Yeah. I might have a big head, but it's not that big. Not that big. (laughs) That's like pouring a uh, box of cereal out for the... uh, the treat at the bottom of the box and then putting the cereal back in the bag for your sibling to yeah, exactly. <laughs> see if they can find it. Yeah. <laughs> there was no prize in that bag of cereal. Yeah. And that excitement, like, I mean, you know, when you cultivate a new idea and you really, you nurture it and you, you grow it and you really, that whole expression of it's really your, it's your baby. Yeah. I really get a sense of that in this whole process. And, you know, by now for the listeners, you guys would have heard our intro that we just cut the other day. And so I was able to sit down with our engineer and producer, Andy, who's not with us tonight, but we were able to go through that. And actually I was able to get some hands on with the software to edit that and lay the music in. And it was just such a rewarding experience. And you were excited. Yeah. I mean, genuinely like you shared that track. Yeah. You shared that track. I was on the road. So yeah. right. A little quick glance down message from Wes. Didn't open it. And um, if you're familiar with our setup and where we're recording, you know, we come across the bypass at Bob Cajun. Yeah, there's no secret when I'm in the building because it's uh, the sea of of light. And kind of a look back over my shoulder and I'm like, Wes is still there. And a big kind of U-turn and uh, the boys were laughing because I definitely hit the curb with the car (laughs) and pa-bump pull in and he's like did you get my text i'm like i haven't opened it. he's like you all listen to it and just listening it in front of you yeah and seeing that excited he'd be like i did that by myself <laughs> yeah Andy helped, but i did that by myself yeah 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 so uh intros and outros uh you know cut and recorded and then you know the musical the overlay and and like i say like this whole process is just i keep going back to the word fascinating because i really can't come up with something else but uh it is. It's totally fascinating. And the more I do and the more I get hands on, the more hungry I get to want to do stuff. I really hope that what we're doing is resonating with uh, our listener base and that, you know, that you do like it and you you do, you know, and I don't just mean this from the, yeah, please share it around because we want to grow this thing. But of course I want it to grow. But I hope that you find that you are getting uh, your time's worth out of hanging with us exactly right we we want to you know make that commute easier or maybe it's hopping on the bike at home or working out at the gym and you know you can put us on into your ears and listen to us and that you're not going why did i just listen to that that you can maybe chuckle out loud and people look at you funny and you know that's the kind of stories i want to hear and be like i actually laughed out loud i was walking down the street and wes said that to scott and i just laughed (laughs) 
<laughs> and that's right. Th- those, those are the best things. And it's like, right. You're, you're creating a reaction, an emotional reaction. And that's, I think a lot of, um, why we enjoy each other's company, right? You can make yeah. me laugh and I can make you laugh. And then I start to laugh and I can't stop. And that makes it worse for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then, right. Just covering your face and trying to, <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm not crying. But, uh, yeah, but really I am, I am crying, but it's oh, hilarious. <laughs> and you know, you can't catch your breath and then you get the hiccups and it's like, oh, I love that feeling. Yeah. And yeah, if I could bottle that and sell it. Well, who knows? Maybe we can do it through little earworms. <laughs> there you go. So let's, uh, let's change gears a little bit and let's do something fun. I like fun. Yeah, me too. It's going to tie into, uh, one of the things that we talked about in the last episode. And how, you know, we may or may not <laughs> enjoy a social beverage once in a while. So I was doing some thinking about, you know, jamming for show ideas. And uh, I was reminded of First We Feast on YouTube and their show Hot Ones. I'm a Hot Ones fan. I'm definitely a Hot Ones fan. I, I love the hot, show. I am not a Hot Ones eater. No, no, me neither. But I do like cold ones. Cold ones, Wes? Yeah. As in like beers cold beer oh very cool and we have beers here tonight yeah so we're fortunate enough to uh my wife bought me a a few months of the beer of the month club so every month for three months i got a dozen craft beers from all over ontario and so uh tonight we're going to try something fun we're going to do our version of hot ones and indeed we are going to do cold ones we're going to sample a few beers here and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a good reaction for you. So uh, tonight's selections are coming to us from the Salter Street Brewery out of Toronto, the Abe Herb Brewing Company from Waterloo, and the Brock Street Brewing Company from Whidbey. So I guess here in the Cold Ones format, we don't really have a format. We just have four beers lined up. They are the same four beers. I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of go through them. We'll... Uh, Describe what we're seeing here, have a taste, and maybe uh, give some thoughts and feelings and reactions to that. I do not hold myself responsible for any negative comments that I may make about your beer. But I do like beer, so I hope I enjoy them all. Well, you know how it is. I I like free and I like cold, so they all fit the bill. So, beer number one. Number one, what do we got first? It's about bloody time. Ooh. And that is a 5.2 from Salter Street Brewery. Very interesting. So a malt forward English ale with a light biscuity character, hints of toffee and caramel, smooth out to a refreshed, earthy finish backed with an assertive get off my lawn bitterness. Nice. So I got to tell you, as somebody who worked in healthcare for uh, a number of years, if you came into my clinic and you told me that you're, uh, you were peeing this color, I would immediately throw you on an IV. This is very, very amber. It's a very nice looking beer. It is. It's a great looking beer. It's a poor looking urine. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's hope it does not taste like. It certainly doesn't smell it. It smells good, though. Smells good. Okay, ready? Cheers. Cheers to you, sir. (sighs) I don't hate it. Well, that's a great first impression. (laughs) Um, It's got a nice finish. It does have a nice finish. I'm getting the toffee and the caramel now. It's definitely there. Definitely. And I think, again, we said before, a lot of these beers aren't beers that you sit down and pound 12, like a case of Coors or Blue. These are definitely beers that you enjoy taking your time, have one or two. Or I mean, it's it's an English ale, and I think, you know... Well, I shouldn't even start. I shouldn't even dive into that. I'm trying to. I'm trying to upsell an English ale on a country that's <laughs> that invented the pub crawl. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, uh, it's good. I it's have to say right. that it is good. And uh, I would, as much as I got down on ales in our last episode, I have to be honest with you. This is in my yay file. There you go. This one's a yay. Um, as I say, certainly leaves a little bit of um aftertaste at the back end but for sure definitely would would take that with a uh a plate of fish and chips that would be good that is a good use yep absolutely one down okay that was good almost feel like uh you know to go good with that right now piece of chocolate just like plain milk chocolate 
That'd be really good. Right? Yeah. Or even, um, oh, like salted caramel. Yeah, that'd be good too. That, right? And a little bit of that salty for the bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, number two, next up on the uh, docket, we have the Brock Street Brewing Company Munich Lager. This is a 6% lager. It is a medium body, delicious and creamy in texture, and it has hints of fresh biscuits with a subdued hop presence. I feel like there's a uh, biscuit theme. Biscuity. Because the last one was bit. Well, this this whole box actually was, uh, I don't want to say that they're fortified, but uh, they're all stronger than the last one I got. Right. Um, again, this is uh, still a darker amber, but not quite as dark as the last one. Yeah. And this is like, this to me, it's dark enough that if you told me this was an ale, I would believe you, but it is uh, it is a lager. It's got, uh, you know, there's virtually no sediment in it, so that's good. Not much of, an, uh, of a note when I put my nose into no. it. Not much there. You're very sophisticated when you do that, though. Yeah, well, I try. <laughs> Fake it till you make it, right? Right. All right, here, let's try it. Cheers. And to you. Refreshing. Now, I don't know if it's because we just had an ale on top of this. We didn't clean our palate. We certainly didn't. So that's really going to influence my impression of this, because right now, my first impression is it's a no. It's a no for me. Not enough taste? Yeah, I don't think so. Mm. Okay, now I'm getting it. There's the biscuit. A little buttery. Yeah. A little I, buttery. I wouldn't say, like, right? It definitely is less bitter than the last one. So, I mean, yeah. I think when you have a very strong taste, it does change that palate. And as they say, we're we're not uh, cleaning our palate and <laughs> no. doing a little spit test here. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're not swishing this for, at all. Forgive us for our crudeness and our uh, inability to... Uh, Give a constructive criticism. Oh, on, to a, your on a side note, I've already got the next one lined up. So eventually, this is going to spawn into like spirits and drinks, right? So I figure when we get to spirits, yummy, we're gonna we're gonna change it. It'll still be cold ones, but we're gonna call it shots. Shots. <laughs> I wouldn't say again. I would drink a whole can of this. I probably would, and maybe now, mind you, we took some time to get set up tonight, so it's not as cold as it could be. And generally speaking, I do prefer all of my carbonated bevies to be cold. Uh, icy cold. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse my decision. This is not a no, but this is not my first choice. No. Oh, are we actually gonna rate these at the end of like? Oh, I don't know. Good, better, best. Well, right now the um, it's about, about bloody, bloody time, time is, is in the lead, leading the race. Yeah. So our next beer is Transatlantic. Uh, again, another 6.0 uh, alcohol level, and it is from Abe Herb Brewing. An APA is juicy sweet and rife with aromas and flavors of grapefruit and fruit berries with a subtle bready touch. Hopped generously with mosaic and El Dorado. Now, this one, when I cracked it and poured sure. it into our glasses, it certainly had that citrusy smell as soon as I cracked it. It was uh, quite so, okay, appealing. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right on that. Color-wise, it's you know, it's a it's a definitely um, it's golden. It's uh, it's certainly not. It's a little closer to the amber side of golden. I would um, agree. But it's still got it's got great opacity. I I can see through it. It's not dark in any way that you know suggests that oh, this is not what you're in for. And it does have a nice citrus note. Very nice. I'm always a fan of that. I love citrus. I like the initial going in. I don't like the after. The aftertaste? Yeah. I might agree with you. A couple sips to get to it. I wonder if that would be different if this was the only, if this was the only thing that we had had. On a hot day? Sure. And super cold? I bet it would yeah. be super refreshing. That's two mouthfuls and I'm starting to struggle. I'll agree. Okay. Not, not on my to finish list. Do I finish it on principle? Of course you do. Okay. Well, I'm doing it on principle, not because I want to. Bottoms up. To you, sir. <laughs> That is not good if we... Oh. Yeah. Sorry to... Uh, sorry, Abe Herb. Sorry, Transatlantic. I don't, I don't know who you are. Maybe Transatlantic, it sunk like the Titanic. Oh, boy. Well, they say there's only one Prince of Darkness. 
but apparently in this case there's two. This is another one from Abe Herb, and this is the Prinz of Darkness. Prinz, P-R-I-N-Z, because it's edgy. The Prinz of Darkness. Not only is it edgy, it is dark. Oh, is it ever? It looks like a stout. Comes in at 5.9% alcohol. This black IPA lets vibrant hop and deep roast character share in the symbiotic spotlight with aromas and flavors of light coffee, baking chocolate, and pine. So the chocolate that I wanted three uh, three drinks ago, yes. it might be in this. It might be in this. Uh, and it's good. I like coffee and I like beer. So the theory is two things I like. This should be good. All right. Opacity. Can't see through it. No. It's Thick. dark. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Smells like coffee. clean on the palate at the start it is and not really better that's i'm surprised with finish that. on that's okay i'm very surprised with that i thought that would lee grab your molars and pull them out yeah i was expecting more from this and I, more i mean like more more of everything more huspa yeah now i'm getting the coffee the coffee's coming through and i'm a black coffee drinker so when i say the coffee's coming through i mean it is coming through like like brewed black coffee. Again, this I'm not struggling with it. I like it. I would put that into my rotation if that was You know what I would do with this? This would be uh this would be a breakfast beer. I would have this with a steak and eggs or something like that. Oh, very good. Yeah, for sure. For those mornings where you just need to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would be like I'm on vacation. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have to be in front of anybody. I'm going to have a, a beer with my breakfast and I'm going to make an, if I'm going to have like a, a breakfast that I'm going to put the effort into making, sure, I'm going to treat myself maybe with one of these. There you go. Yeah. On a side note, I did that this year. My birthday was on a Saturday and I started the day off with a beverage. Well done. Hello, 45. Well, um, if you're watching your calendar, I got one coming up here. In uh, on the twelfth, in ten days, you're welcome, best friend. Yeah. Um. So it's like on Thanksgiving Monday. I know. So uh, nobody's working. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's exciting. D- so forty six. Forty six. Yeah. Yeah. How's 40, it, how's uh, it feel to be older than me? I know I'm older than you, but I don't feel older than you. Oh. You look as old as I do. Wow. <laughs> okay. No, that's not true. Thanks. I I definitely. <laughs> I've definitely I, shown it in the age oh, department. <laughs> well, right. I know what my beard grows in as, so don't yeah, yeah. feel bad. Okay, fair enough. All right, so the inaugural uh, episode of Cold Ones. What do we think? i do it again. I think i bring this out maybe when we had a guest. I think so, too. And do a three-way. Yeah. You do mean drink three ways. Of course. Okay, fantastic. Have you looked in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> I live with me. I know what I look like. <laughs> right? Somebody would be settling for two of us, and we'd be like, high five. Well, you know, fortunately, between the two of us, I think we have access to at least one and possibly two brewmasters. We do. Yeah. So I think we It'd should be very encourage. interesting to have somebody yeah. with fancier words than us. Yeah. People that can actually, you know, make us look better. <laughs> yeah. And tell us. <laughs> I was going to say it looked like it had nice legs, but I think that's a wine oh, terminology or a whiskey terminology. Maybe. And not a beer terminology. So I just kept Maybe. my mouth shut. And now I'm letting everyone know that I don't know what I'm talking about. But you know what you like. And that's important. I think that's, I mean, that's how everybody chooses their beer or what's cheap. And I yeah. feel like. We're past that point. No wildcat for this guy. No, no Laker. If I got to spend an extra 20 bucks to get a case of beer that I enjoy. Yep. You know, it's funny too, because you joke with guys and you still see the odd guy, you know, reaching into his cooler bag and pulling out an export. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, you drinking that so no one else steals your beer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I've been, um, you know, all the kids have played hockey. We've all sure. been away on hockey tournaments and, you know, the parents kind of hang out in one room and the kids hang out in the other. And you know what? Export's not that bad, especially when you're well it's on not. your way and somebody else is passing sure. you their beer. Yeah. 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 For sure it is. As we said, free and cold. Free and cold is always a favorite flavor. So out of four, what are you rating number one? Number one. Well, first impressions are always lasting, and in this case, it couldn't be truer. My number one is It's About Bloody Time from Salter Street. I will concur. It's fantastic. I would drink that uh, probably any time, any occasion. 
I don't need a reason to drink that. That's good, which is saying a lot for me considering how down I've been on ales as of late. Poor old ales. Yeah. Number two. Uh, number two. So th- now two through four is kind of fuzzy because they're all kind of just, nah. I'm going to go with the Prince of Darkness and only because I feel like I could roll that out for an occasion. You have a reason to Yeah, drink I have it. a reason to want to drink it, whereas the other two I could reach for if that's what was there. All right. I think we're going to concur across the board. Uh, <laughs> Prince of Darkness would be my number two. Yeah. Which makes number three Transatlantic. Yeah, Transatlantic and Munich Lo- uh, the Brock Street uh, Munich Lager. Bringing up the tail end. They're almost a neck and neck for me, but if I had to... I think the citrus in the transatlantic and hot day, super cold, I think I can slip that in hanging out at the the water or on the dock, you know, somewhere where you just want something kind of refreshing to take the heat off. I think that does the job. And I would concur with that. So uh, props over to uh, over to Sulter Street Brewery out of uh, Toronto and their It's About Bloody Time. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, little amber ale and I highly recommend it. I wonder if we should get a rating. Is that a, so it's a three barber pole? Oh, yeah. <laughs> For future really, reference, yeah. we'll figure that one out. And, yeah. Uh, well, there's only four beers, so yeah. I guess, you know, uh, out of four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So four barber, barber poles and then everything else uh, <laughs> concurring down from there. Uh, oh, that maybe, was fun. I enjoyed that. Maybe if things go well and we do a couple more episodes, we'll bring back all the champions. Yeah, so... That means the onus is on us to make sure we're recording this. Uh, make sure we keep a record of that to make sure that we know. Very good. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. An, maybe another little picture and we'll actually put them in. The um, champs. The champs. The champs edition. Yeah. Cold ones, the championship edition. I think that would be super interesting. So that means uh, what? Every uh, fifth episode would be a showdown of champs. Sure. Yeah. So like, let's say cold ones is probably good for, I don't know, a quarterly. Quarterly. and sure. then Yeah. So we'll if you like a... this um, segment, let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Let us and, know. And uh, yeah. And it... if there's anything else, listen, we're a couple of middle-aged guys. So, I mean, you know, we're not made of, uh, you know, intestinal fortitude like some young 20-year-old. So there there are limits. But if there's stuff you want us to try, you've got a suggestion that you think uh, we might uh, go for, or you just have a, a go-to favorite that we've never heard of, drop us a line in any of our uh, socials and let us know what you want us to try next. Always interested in trying new things. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of trying new things, your lovely wife and yourself have uh, encouraged Kim and I on several occasions to come out and uh, join you guys on the Axe League. You know what? We uh, we have, and we started, we did that as a couple's evening with another couple, and the Buckleys, I think, came out with us, and we did that just the three of us at Peterborough Axe, and we had a great time. We did, yeah. So we've played casually, what? Three times now? Three, four times. Three times. And then you and Michelle went off and joined the league. We did, um, which was awesome. Uh, so Lindsay Axe Club um, down on Mary Street in Lindsay, yep. uh, they did a little, uh, hey, like and share this post and you could win. Oh, that's right. Right. You we, could win a free membership. We, yep. Uh, you and a guest. Um, yeah. So, right. We all posted and I think Michelle was my friend, and then Michelle sure, posted, sure. and Kim was her friend, and then yeah, Kim, yeah, yeah, and very conveniently, I won, so I took my bestest friend. Uh, Mich- I know, yeah, yeah, not Wes, but <laughs> Michelle, uh, and we went. And- Would she skip down the road with you with a box of moonshine? She's well past her skipping age. <laughs> but we're not talking about skipping. We're talking about we're talking about axes. Axe, here. right. So, right, wonderful promotion. So we went and threw axes for league. Did horrible at it. But I enjoyed it enough that when that eight week period was over, we signed up for another one and we have slowly gotten better. I think we've gotten better. Gotten better. Since I've joined the league, I've uh, now I can see the scores. Uh you've gotten better. Uh so just so you all know, uh folks, right now Scott is uh on our Thursday night league is ranked number two of what, twenty? Uh you're incorrect. Are you I, number one? I am ranked number one. You are number one. Okay. I knew um, you. there was a flip there yes. between weeks. Yes. And uh, my lovely wife is ranked number two. Yeah. Then it goes Jen, Cole, K-Mac, Johnny, Bob, Bruce, Sarah, Scary Nick. Oh, Kim A. You know Kim A. I do. Yeah. I sleep with her every night. And then in 12th place 
is Wes A. Yay, look at me go. Um, look at me. Not last. 12, not last. Not last. No, far uh, from last. You are better than six other people. You know what? And I'm okay with that. And and I don't know if I got into this in the last episode, but it's like we had a couple of reasons for not wanting to come out. I know you you and Michelle had been very encouraging and very supportive. You know, like, hey, you know, it'd be a, a, another thing for us to do together. You know, more time to hang out, which we're always looking for things to do to hang out. And it's a night out of your house. Absolutely. Kim had had other commitments because she belonged to another organization that she's now free from. Defunct from. And for me, it was easy. She wasn't going, then I wasn't going. But like for me, no secret, I don't do competitive sports. It's not in my nature. As soon as there's a competitive edge to it, I tune out because it's not fun anymore. Correct. And I would say Michelle's very much in the same mindset, which is this is why it's so funny. Yeah. She doesn't care at all yeah and you know i watch her throw and i can't help and i said this to kim the other night i'm like look at the way michelle throws it's like it's effortless yeah she just has that technique where it's like is she trying or not you know because you you really don't know no. but the axes are landing yep and the, she's consistent yeah and it's a sport of consistency for sure it is i look at my feet every time i think about how i'm breathing um, I may be taking a I, I don't care where I sit. To be truthful, I did lose to my wife this week, and I'm okay with that. Sure, sure. Um, I did blame the boards. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'd never think that uh, two by sixes, you could hate them so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it gives you an appreciation for a good, clean board with no knots. Yeah, and it's this really, I don't even know how to explain it. If you've never thrown axes before, and hopefully you didn't have a reason to do it outside of, you know, organized sport. But uh, you get in there and they put the axe in your hand. And, and we're literally talking like go down to Canadian Tire and buy yourself a hand hatchet with a wooden handle and throw it at a chunk of wood. That Like there's nothing special about them. There is not. There really isn't. It is a very obtainable sport. Yeah, totally. Uh, you can go out and buy your own axe so you have the feel of something from week yeah. to week. Yeah, yeah. Or, as I say, the club is happy to provide you with an axe. Disclaimer, they are taking full COVID measures. Uh, oh, absolutely. That axe is yours the entire evening, and then they yeah. are sanitizing yeah, yeah. it when Yeah, yeah. Every you're axe is labeled and numbered, and so there's no sharing of axes. And, you know, even when it comes to tiebreakers where, you know, you go to the the big axe or the, the full-size axe that, you know, you... Would chop wood with. Right, that you would share with your opponent... There's COVID precautions between where the handles are sanitized and, and it's done very professionally. But again, if you've if you've never thrown axes before, the barrier to entry is so minimal. Like literally just show up and try yeah. it. Get a group of friends together, go out and throw some. It is a great evening. The club will put up a coach for you. They'll teach you everything you need to know about throwing axes. And, you know, from a guy who does not do competitive sports, we're coming up, we're going into week four now. Correct. Week three was my best week yet. You have progressively gotten yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, And so has Kim. And I've really enjoyed myself in a way that I didn't think I would. And you know what? I've said all along, I never expected to be top of league or the best, or I still haven't won an eight-week right, uh, right, championship. Right. Yeah. Certainly on my, my to-do list. But the, the nice thing is that um, through... The IATF, which is the International Axe Throwing Federation. Oh, no. Le nope. I got that right. <laughs> yeah. Say try it again. One more time. <laughs> International Axe Throwing Federation. International Axe Throwing Federation. Um, they have a website. And the, all these scores are recorded. Yeah. And you can see your growth from week to week. Yeah, yeah. As I said to Kim and Wes, it's not about where you're scoring with other people. It's where you're scoring against yourself. And, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. I look at that, and it's so funny because you look at Michelle's score, two points for a win, no points for a loss, and if it goes to Big Axe, you get a point uh, if you lose. That's just, right. Yeah, just, just for, for making getting it to Big there. Axe. Yeah, yeah. So in uh, week three, 12 games played, Scott has won 10, lost one, one overtime loss for a total of 21 points. Oh, that's fantastic. Michelle has played 12 games, 10 wins, two losses for a total of 20 points. Yeah, yeah. Going down to Kim, 12 games played, six won, six lost, 12 points. Kim, or my apologies, Wesley. That's me. Uh, 12 games. Yep. Five wins. Yeah. 
Six losses. Boo. One overtime loss. Yeah. 11 points. Yeah. Uh, so only one point in between you and Kim. Yeah, yeah. And only one point between Michelle and Scott. Yeah, that's really interesting. Looking at the metrics, and interestingly enough, not that the listeners can appreciate this, but if you scroll over and have a look at the- um, Clutches. Not clutches. Kim's got a bunch of them. Well, here's, right? So I've thrown for, uh, I don't even know how many weeks or how many leagues. So I only have eight clutches. This is Kim's first league ever. Ever. She has five. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know what the clutch is, that that is a small circular target on the board that is uh, three inches inches, in diameter. Maybe a little smaller. Yeah, maybe. Um, So ideally, IATF has the theory of it's three rings. Yeah. So there's a bullseye worth five. Then there's a ring outside of that worth three. And then there's an outside ring worth one. You throw five axes on your last axe, you can call clutch. So you call your shot. If you hit that little green dot in the left or right corner, right. that's worth seven points. Right. And that thing's like, what, three inches across? Yeah, it's small. Yeah. So it's a big deal to hit it. And your wife does it nonchalantly. And what's really funny is that, you know, when the chips are down and, you know, she's behind and it's like clutch to win or clutch to tie or, or you know. Just clutch to get seven points. Right. And she's nailed it, well, that many times. Yeah, which is exciting. And now here's the great thing about axe throwing. So, right, it all comes down to uh, that whole win-loss thing and points. But, I mean, here's the difference in between 1st and 11th and 12th, right? So, total axes thrown and total points thrown. Yeah. Um, I'm at 712. Michelle yeah. is at 589. That's a big difference between one it and is. two. Yeah, yeah. And yet, because she wins her games, because yeah, yeah. she's consistent. That's it, right. It does not matter. No, because it's wins. And then in third place, they have a score of 621. So there's somebody that's throwing a few more bullseyes than Michelle every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it comes down to consistency and win-loss. Just to throw it out there, Kim's at 349. Yeah. And Wes is at 481. So again, there you go. There's another example that, you know. There's a... uh... I was looking at it before we left the other night, and there's a, uh, I don't know what the category is, but it's like, when you get to the big axe? Yes. I think I have the most of those in the league, actually, at three. And I can't remember what the title of that, the metric. Or rubber match. Yeah, that's it. Each match is three rounds. Yeah. So rubber match is you play the first one, they win one. Yeah, yeah. And then second round, you win. So now the third one is that rubber match, right? You bounced off each other, and now- the third game means something, right? Yeah. Where some rounds- um, That's where the real excitement is. <laughs> oh, for sure. It means something, right? You're equally matched. Yeah, where yeah. sometimes, right, you can come in- Or just equally poor that night. <laughs> oh. And there's nights where you're playing somebody and they win the first two games. Sure. And then the third game becomes this, does it really matter, does it matter? thing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I always say it's still important to throw well because- Of course it is. Um, at the end of the season- Let's say, I can't remember the metrics, they take the top 12 and they get to do a little play down tournament at the end Yeah, on week eight, right? Um, It's always nice to make that cut and have a little bit of play down because you know what? Everything changes in playoffs. Of course it does. Yeah. So I consistently have poor playoffs and get put out pretty early. And as I say, that's a mental game on my point and I, I struggle with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Sometimes I really, I look at these scores and I analyze them and I go, no, you know what? I shouldn't be losing to that person because I look at my, you know, my average ax throw, it's higher than theirs. I look at my clutches. I think that might even be part of the problem is that because everything is posted, you're not just looking at you, you're looking at everybody else. Yes. So it's easy to start weighing the you know the scales and kind of go well i should be i should be or i shouldn't let that get in my head that they've beat me sure every time for the last yeah, yeah. six leagues i can beat them because look at me yeah i know i'm better than how i play i'm just happy to show up pitch a hunk of metal at a piece of wood and have it not hit the floor nice yeah the so. stick the stick yeah yeah and I got to tell you, I, uh, the couple times we've done it, you know, recreationally, which was like, oh yeah, I like this. This is fun. And I would do it again. You've come out winners. Come, well, those times. Yeah. 
all three times. <laughs> and then uh, to join the league, the loner axe, it's fine. It's completely serviceable, and I, and I like it. I intend to get one at some point, but uh, my God, the, the variety of, of hardware that's out there. You have been using, somebody has kindly let you use yeah. one of their extra axes out of yes, their bag. from another club that we won't talk about. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that club. Uh, Warriors sure, sure. in Coburg. Uh, has a ton of cool stuff. They do. Other than axes to throw at their targets. And I would suggest, I would recommend them if you're going away for a weekend or looking for an extra night, there's nothing wrong with going and supporting another club. I wasn't trying to throw shade at them. It was more like our own club doesn't sell this stuff. <laughs> no, which is fine. They don't sell any axes. So, I mean, Warriors gone into that market yeah, and yeah. they sell things that you can throw at their club. That's true. That's true. And the axe you've been looking at looks like a meat cleaver. Yeah. In fact, on their website, that's what it's referred to as the cleaver. It's a weapon. It is. And it's it's slightly heavier than the club axe. But for whatever reason, you know, that works for me because I'm not a... I'm not a one-handed... Uh, You're not a finesse flick thrower? No, I'm not a baseball pitcher. I'm a two-handed, overhead, no movement, stand perfectly still chucker, I guess. And this is the wonderful thing about axe throwing. Yeah. You just need to find what you're good at oh, yeah, yeah. and stick with it. Michelle is a very traditional, you know, one foot in front of the other. Yep. She takes a step, she throws. Yep. You're, as you said, a very standstill, yeah, very over stationary. the head, two hand thrower. Yep. Um, Kim's still a two hand thrower. I think she's taking a step. She is taking a step now that you mention that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm on the other hand. I'm a. You're like a lunger. I am a lunger, a yeah. flicker, if you is will. Is that what they call it? I think so. Sure. Uh, maybe I'm a hybrid, but right, I got my left arm supporting my elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I kind of do a. A but release. that's your thing. That's your thing. And right, I've done a few different throws and a few different foot positions, and it's what's working for me, and I enjoy it. it. But it's interesting, like you say, to watch other people throw and to see the variance in, and not just the hardware, but the variance in technique. There's people that throw we and have, kill. We have, I don't want to mess up her name, Janessa? Jan yep. So Janessa, watching her throw is like watching somebody pitch lob ball. It is a lob. Yeah, it's a lob, but yet- it works for her. It does. And it's really just, it's so interesting just to see. And right, there's somebody that throws almost like a sidearm, like a baseball. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. then there's people that throw uh, traditionally and just throw hard. I was going to say, there's a couple of angry pitchers there. For sure. Yeah. And it's like, it's amazing because the axe just appears like yeah. that in yeah. the target. You're yeah. like, I didn't even see the axe leave nope. your hand you threw it so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? And it, it's um, it certainly is a sport that's for anybody, all ages. So I mean, like, yeah, I would say wait, well, the youngest on the league is probably what early twenties. Uh, yeah, twenties, probably eighteen. Sure. Actually, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think the oldest, if I had to guess, maybe Bruce and his wife. Maybe, yeah. So right, sure. he'd definitely so be 60s. sixty plus. And you know what? There's a lovely lady that plays Tuesday night. Yeah, she comes in a walker. Oh wow. So right when she takes the walker up, she stands freestanding. Yeah, throws her axe, leans throws, back into the walker. You betcha. And Absolutely. so I mean, right? It's doable. Um, there's super cool guys that are wheelchair bound. Oh wow! And yeah. they're right. They figured it out. There was a cool charity tournament. Yeah, um, had his wheelchair damaged, and everybody played seated. Oh wow! So. There's really cool, and it's a community thing, right? For sure, for sure, yeah. And it is a great community, and there's a ton of clubs in Ontario. Yeah. So, I mean, there's obviously the one in Coburg. There's one in Peterborough, Oshawa, Whitby. There is a ton of clubs. And, you know, the idea with this whole eight-week league thing, as it progresses, it leads to a final championship right so yeah. if you play well enough you get championship points and then if you qualify you move into the first round of the finals so you throw there and then if you qualify through that you actually get invited to uh invitation only championship weekend and there's a couple guys in our clubs that go down and it's a hoot right and it's camaraderie and it really kind of the cream of the crop kind of raises to the top yeah but yeah of course it's even cool to go down and watch just from a yeah. skill point of view. If you're not throwing, it's still a cool weekend. Yeah, of course it would be. Whew. 
those, okay. those beers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking that, uh, no, everything's everything's pretty good, actually. Okay. I yeah. might be feeling it on my side. Are you? Uh, maybe. Okay. Well, they are, it, like I said, they were, uh, there wasn't anything under five five point nine point two oh, okay five point two was our lowest and then five point nine six and six yeah so Ooh. maybe next time we'll uh choose a lower alcohol percentage maybe okay maybe. Fair I, my forehead might fail the <laughs> finger test <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna call that a pass oh good yeah good, good good you're not there but uh yeah it's all in how you uh digest it yeah so, Wes, you've got something exciting uh, going on. You've sort of moved forward with some other thoughts that you were having, kind of scratching that uh, itch um, that we kind of got with the podcast. What are you going to do next? Yeah. So, um, you know, last year when I did those guest spots, part of the appeal of doing those was the uh, our, our friend Sean, who um, hosts a, a show, uh, Fletch Live, he wanted to do something a little bit different. So he thought, you know... I, as a small business owner that happened to be in uh, toys and games and collectibles, thought that this would be a great sort of segue, a a nice little extra piece for him. Right. He called you in as his pop culture expert. Yeah, he did. Nice. I wouldn't say that I'm an expert, but I've always said, you know, where pop culture is concerned, you know, I can be conversational and I think I know just enough to be dangerous, you know, in a number of subjects. I'm totally going to segue here. Sure. Like, right, danger. You're absolutely right because we did a really cool thing last year at Fenland Brewery. Yeah. Trivia night. That's right. Now, we didn't get a ton of them in, but right. Lamborghini. Right. (laughs) And we talked about that is, you know what, we should do really well because Michelle knows really random facts. Yeah. You know movies and music and pop culture. Yeah. I'm sort of there with a few things. Kim's there with a few things. Sure. And we really did pretty well with the first, I think we went two or three we, nights. We did. We went to the finals on our first night and lost it in the finals. Exactly. So but, I felt pretty good about that. Yeah. So, I mean, right. And I mean, we were, a, we were a team of four. Keep in mind, we were competing against teams of eight. Six and six eight. Six and eight. Yeah. Right. So, a lot more brains brought to the sure, table. Sure, sure. So I felt pretty good about that. Yeah, so I mean that was that was sort of your go-to. That was our expectation that you were filling that yeah, gap for yeah, us. Yeah. And you did we there wasn't a ton of pop culture no. questions, but I mean, right, we you and I had a good laugh cuz they played a little clip of music and we both like, "Oh, we know that, that yeah. clip of music." <laughs> so that was cool. But I digress. And that's that really uh it pushes all my creative buttons, you know, like there's a lot of there's a lot of YouTubers that I follow who are in the toy space. You know, there's a lot of entertainment news that I like to follow. And, and that's that's really, you know, my life after the military has been pop culture. You know, not only is it my business, but it's also my passion. So I'm happy to say that uh, I'm developing another show that we're going to record. And it's going to be a, a pop culture show. That's And it's going to be about, you know, your fandom, whether it's video games toys, movies, music, television, there's really no limits because like I say, everybody's got their, their fandom and, and fandom is really, it's such a personal thing and it's a, a real expression of the, the thing that you like, you know, like some people, they like to cosplay their fandom and other people like to collect the toys of their fandom. So everybody has their fandom. So I'm happy to say that I'm going to be producing a show fandom power and nice. it's and it's going to be coming in the next little bit here hopefully uh i'll get one in in the next uh 30 days or so but watch for that soon that is very cool yeah fandom power fandom power now you played around with that name a little bit right i did i was really struggling on what to call this thing and i i, I was like i was looking for a title that was really sort of encapsulating pop culture in sort of the, the broadest sense and i'm like i i had some like you know, like hard science fiction kind of titles. And then I had this working title for the last, I don't know, week or so that I was like, you know, heroes, you know, what do you associate with heroes? And then, well, what's, you know, not everybody's a hero, but everybody maybe has their own, you know, idea of what a hero is. So maybe like not a hero, what's the opposite of a hero, but it's got to flow with heroes. I'm like hobos. So I'm like, is it hobos and heroes or hobos to heroes? And then for a while there it was, hobos to heroes and beyond and then you know just today actually that was like maybe we should be rethinking this and maybe 
reword it beyond hobos and heroes so it poses a bit more of a question and it brings a little more thought engagement to the listener and i'm just racking my brain on this thing and then literally sitting in the car waiting for my wife to come out of the uh, pop-up halloween store uh, spirit right. spirit halloween i'm sitting in the car and it just hit me fandom power i like, like it yeah me too it just it was a real epiphany uh, if ever there was one. And I mean, it's cool that like, these words that we create sure. out of nothingness. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, right, fandom. Where was – that wasn't a word a no, decade No, no, you're right, you're right. And I mean, the fact that, you know, it's also, you know, superficially, it's a word play on phantom power, which, of course, you know, anybody who's done any recording, you know, you kind of get the idea of phantom power to power your, you know, some of your gear, your microphones and stuff. So, you know, it fits really well. Uh, in the whole idea of a podcast. And it's also a wicked awesome. Oh, it's, tragically a, yeah, hip. it's a hip record. It is a hip record. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, right, not the th- another throwback, right? We are in Bob Cajun. Yeah, and I mean, uh, if you're going to be anywhere outside of Kingston and, you know, you want to start dropping hip references, this would be the place to do it. Well, right, it's where the constellations yes, that's right. appeared one star at a time. That's right. Because <laughs> <laughs> what rhymes with constellation? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's super exciting. You're planning on doing some solo stuff and some guest stuff, obviously. Yeah, because of my professional life, I'm... I won't say I'm connected per se, but I'm very involved in the online community where toys and pop culture are concerned. So um, I admin for a group. You know people. I do know a few people. So I mean, between the 1,500 or so people that I have access to, I think there's some great conversations to be had. And uh, I will be looking to those groups and to the general public for audience participation. So like I said, everybody's got their fandom and I want to know about yours. So keep us in mind when that show launches. Nice. I'll be happy to sit by and give idle chit chat. It's funny too, because like I walked into your store. Yeah. Right. I'm adversely. I will admit I'm a bit of a nerd, right? But I feel like my my nerddom or fandom is not uh, to the ninth degree, right? Sure. I still like sci-fi. I yep. like movies. I do truly enjoy Star Wars, Star Trek, all those things. Speaking my language, my yeah, friend. yeah. But it's like it's funny because then it's sort of like kind of compare mine to yours and i'm like (laughs) i'm such a poor fan (laughs) no you're a connoisseur connoisseur Connoisseur. but you're uh, a discerning fan yeah yeah and it's still cool that um like i say it it's funny because i would tell you you know that brought us together it did um because if i wasn't that guy i would have walked into your store sure we wouldn't have reconnected we no. wouldn't have grown this friendship no of course not. through other things so you know what our our fandom brought us together it really did so uh i guess we can kind of thank that common ground for spawning all of this yeah and as i say right it truly is it becomes i hate to say more appropriate in today's society but more people are talking about it than ever before. You know, it was easy when the Big Bang Theory was still on TV. Thank God for nerds. You know, he's made it Sheldon Cooper. There was never, uh, and you know what? Even now, because of programs like the Big Bang Theory, there is no better time to uh, wear your nerd on your sleeve. Yeah, wave you know, that flag. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that I think is is opened up. Uh, it's completely normal now. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. not everyone's afraid to say that I like D and D or you know all yeah. those things that you yeah, like. Yeah, of course. Don't talk. About What's that? that? Don't talk about that yeah, out loud. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff that get you beat up when you're you know ten years old. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you do what at the library on Saturday afternoons? That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, shout out to Mike Perry, my first DM ever. <laughs> Ran a good campaign. I'll throw that out there. I hope Mike listens to this. Shout out to and, uh, the defunct Fenland Falls Public School for crushing our Dungeons and Dragons club during the height of the satanic panic. Exactly, right? <laughs> and I think that was a go. And then it was like parents were like, no, no go. <laughs> no way. But that, I, again, we won't steal your thunder. No. I think that certainly Let's save that be, for another time. That can certainly be uh, talked about. So, yeah, I mean, uh, any big plans for the rest of your week? I think we're recording this on a Saturday This night. is a Saturday, yeah. So uh, tomorrow, Sunday, it's going to be a quiet day. Kim's got some time off coming up here 
in the next little bit. So outside of absolutely have to be there, I think we're actually going to take some time away and nice. uh, try and get uh, a little more reconnected and just make sure that things are, are driving at home because as much as I'm excited about all of this, I just got to make sure that I'm uh, balancing that with everything at home. So For sure. Uh, I have work tomorrow, another busy day in retail. A uh, little bit of uh, work the rest of the week. Yeah. Um, I think the granddaughter's hanging out at the house tonight, so that'll be cool to go home and see her. Oh, fantastic. And then I guess I'll see you on Thursday at Axron. If I don't talk to you before then, but, you know, if not, uh, Thursday night then. Yeah. Another good episode. Yeah, another uh, good episode, for sure. We're coming up on, uh, we're just over the one hour mark now, so. Uh, all right, so Cold Ones, uh, episode uh Segment one is in the books. Yeah. Uh, a champion was crowned. Yes. And um, I think we will repeat that. Thank you. It's about bloody time. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Another fun time as always, sir. I look forward to the next one and I hope you do too. I will. Bye for now. Bye. Hey, thanks for hanging with us at the barbershop. You can find us on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Please like and share us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our shenanigans. Hanging at the Barbershop is a Sawcast production.